Alright, so this is a tutorial for Excitebike, and basically I'm going to show you some of the basics. Uh, I'm going to show you, you know, basic play, how to, you know, how to, uh, you know, avoid overheating and just basically get decent times. And then I'm going to go into uh, more advanced strategies and, you know, how to how to get much faster times and faster speeds. So uh, first of all, so here's the basic thing. Um, you start out and your temperature starts at that little E. You can see it, it's like right where the E starts. Um, and that's typical, but I, I'll, I'm explaining that because I, I'll get into that later, but um, a moves you pretty slowly, uh, B moves you, and, and your temperature can only go up to a certain point. So if you're just holding A the whole time, it's kind of like a safe, you know, you're, you're not going to risk overheating and you can only, only go up halfway. Um, if you hold B, you go faster, which is what you want to do, obviously. But if you hold B, the temperature gauge eventually gets full and you overheat and it stops you. Um, luckily they put some, uh, they put these arrows on the ground. I'll show you in just a second. Um, this is a dirt patch. You obviously want to avoid the dirt patches. So this is a speed, uh, it's like a refill for your temperature. So when you hit this, your temperature goes back to zero essentially. Doesn't you didn't really it doesn't really show it, so you'll see it here. See how it goes like back to zero. So that's very helpful. Uh, these triangular jumps are really really useful, and when you go off them, you want to be holding forward, um, just because they can actually increase your speed. So that was you know those are like the very basic things elements of the game. Um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna just do a quick a quick uh, run through what kind of like a basic run. I'll try and explain a little bit as I go. So you start off I'm holding B, holding B, holding B. Um, you know, you want to land flat. Oh, I'm gonna oh, oh I overheated because I held B too long. You know, and that happens. But you want to land flat. Hit these arrows to reduce your speed. Holding B, holding B, the whole time. Land, you know, go up the jump, land flat. These ones you, you want to hold forward. Hold forward, land flat, hold forward, land flat. Just because they speed you up a little bit. Um, you know, over, gonna overheat, now I'm holding A, so I don't overheat. Now I'm holding B again, so I go faster, holding A, holding B. Um, so, one problem you run into a lot is just that you overheat um, you know, like, I'm actually, I was trying not to overheat, and I've over, overheated twice, just playing, playing the standard way. And, uh, there is a way to avoid that, and I'm gonna get into that in the advanced, uh, more advanced topic, um, as I go along here. But, um, you know, that, that's like 105, okay, that's like a, you know, that's a pretty basic time you're gonna get like you know around a minute is pretty standard um, you know if you don't overheat or anything you're probably gonna get around 55 56 seconds and getting much lower than that isn't really gonna happen for you um, with those strategies you can only get um, I think the lowest I ever got with those strategies is maybe a 53 um, so getting below that is pretty much impossible uh, which is where the advanced strategies come in, which make the game way more interesting. Um, you know, because it's, uh, it's, there's not much to it. It's pretty simple as the basic game. Like, you just want to, you know, play well, you know, land flat on the different uh, hills and whatever. Um, you know, or land, if you land on a hill, you want to land on the, at the angle of the hill also instead of necessarily landing flat. Um, that's one other kind of basic thing. 
But the advanced, the advanced stuff is a little bit interesting. Um, I'm going to turn on the music real quick just to, just to uh, demonstrate this one thing here. So when I play, when I play, I wait on this screen for the music to stop. And the reason I do this is because, do you know how I told you how the energy starts at right where the E begins? If, you know, if you, if you start right away, the energy bar starts at where the E starts. Um, well, if you wait on the title screen and you hold the B button, which is the, you know, to go the fastest you can, right? You hold the B button the, and you press start, you continue to hold the B button, right? You'll notice that the, hold on, <laughs> I did something weird there. Something happened. The game froze or something. <laughs> if you hold B and you press start, notice that the temperature bar starts way down at the bottom. And now it's at E. So you get just that little extra temperature, you know, and it makes it so you can pretty much get to the arrow without having to let go of the button. Um, you know, and obviously that helps your time just a little bit. And it's, it's kind of um, important in a few stages. Um, so that's one kind of advanced strategy that, you know, it saves, I don't know, probably half a second, but that's half a second right there. Um, but, um, so that's one thing. Um, and I think I'm going to actually turn it over to my video that I grabbed here. I grabbed a video that didn't have any, um, it was my, it's my personal best for track four. And I wanted to kind of, I was going to kind of walk through what I'm doing. Um, because it's advanced play. So let me just turn this off and turn this on. All right. So. This is my, this is the world record for track four that I set. And I'm going to try and explain what's going on as I play. All right, so, as I said before, you wait on the title screen, wait until the music stops. Right when the music stops, press start, hold B, and the temperature starts way down you know, it starts, instead of starting right where the E is, it's, see how it starts at zero. Um, you know, and it slowly creeps up, but your bike is at this point before it reaches that mark that it usually starts at. All right, so holding B the entire time here is just, you know, faster than holding A. All right, so I go off the first jump here, and one thing that you can do is you can actually let go of the accelerator. You let go of B, and the reason I do that is because while you're in the air, um, you don't have to be holding B to, to go fast. It'll just carry you forward. So your temperature actually, you can actually reduce your temperature in the air you can see my temperature is actually dropping. See, it's just just a little bit. It's it's not that obvious, but when you get a lot of air, you can tell very clearly that this is helping. Um, so anytime that you're on the ground, you want to be holding B. So at this point, I'm holding B because I'm bounce. I'm going to bounce off the ground here. Um, so anytime you're on the ground, you're holding B. Anytime you're not on the ground, you're not holding, you're only holding forward. That's the other thing. When I go off the jump, I'm holding forward um, so that I can do these little bounces. And I'm always doing this. It's, it's twofold. I'm doing it to, per, to help reduce the temperature. And later on, I'm, I do it to get really fast speeds. So one other thing that I do that you probably didn't notice is that I'm actually, notice that I'm in the second lane here, right? But when I go off the jump, now you notice I actually switched 
to the third lane right as I went off the jump. And the reason I did that is because if you switch down a lane, um, right as you go off any any jump, uh, it actually increases your your jump distance just a tiny amount. Um, and the reason I do that is so I'm in the air longer so that I can preserve the temperature more. And then, um, so you're holding right the entire time. Once you hit the ground, right before you hit the ground, you tap left and that lets you bounce. Um, and then you hold right immediately after. Um, and the reason you do this is because it's even more time that, okay, this little amount of time that I'm actually in the air again. And you notice that I switched lanes down again at that bounce so that my bounce was as high as possible. So basically, I do the highest jump possible by switching a lane down. Then when I bounce, I press, I press left, then hold right and down to bounce high, as high as I can again into this lane. Very kind of complicated, honestly, but at this point, I just hold right. You just hold right, and you won't crash after you've bounced. So, um, so again, go off the ramp, switch down to go higher. Uh, let go of B. <laughs> uh, hold forward. Uh, again, bounce, <laughs> go down. It's kind of complicated, and um, it's a kind of a lot to take in all at once, but essentially what you want to do is you just want to hold for The best thing, I wouldn't worry about switching lanes and all that. I would just worry about, when you're starting to do it, just worry about um, holding forward while going off these ramps. And see, now I've pre preserved my temperature just enough that I can reach this uh, temperature reduce, you know, uh, temperature reducing arrow and it brings it all the way back. Um, so let me just go through this one more time. So uh, just a simple, a simple way. You, you go off the jump when you know you're in the air, you release B and you hold, you're holding forward this whole time. You're holding right this whole time. Right before you hit the ground, you press left and you, you want to be your bike cannot be 90 degree angle. It has to be at a, it has to be at like a less than a 90 degree. If you're holding forward all the way, you will crash. Um, that's why you have to press back. But right after you press back and you bounce, then you want to hold forward the whole time, and you will not crash after that. You don't have to press back again. Um, so here's where it gets really interesting. These triangle jumps, these are the most important thing in the entire game. Um, and the reason why is because if you hold forward off them, they increase your speed by quite a bit. Um, it's the only jump in the game that increases your speed. Otherwise, you're stuck at a, a um, one steady speed. So you hold right off to these triangle jumps. And if you, what you want to do is off the triangle jumps, the other jumps don't matter really, but off the triangle jumps, you want to press left for as few frames as you possibly can. So right before you hit the ground, you press left and immediately after you've hit the ground, you hold right again. And the faster that you can press left, Ideally, you want to press left for a single frame, but the faster that you can press left, the faster that the bike is going to go. So, in this case, this is this is an example where I had a really good time. So this is an example of almost perfect uh, bouncing right here. Okay, so I've increased my speed. Now there's another triangle jump. Do the same thing. Increase my speed again. Now. I'm just going to show you just how fast I'm going. It, it's pretty apparent. I could jump like 50 feet. Um, and once you, once you uh, 
after that, you actually, every single time you land after that point, you want to bounce again for as few, you want to press left as fast as you possibly can to preserve the speed after you've gone up. So after you've gone up one triangle jump, you want to always press left for as few frames as possible when bouncing. Um, so once you've conserve the speed, you obviously want to hit these arrows, and these arrows help you to, you know, your temperature goes way back down, um, which allows you to get even, you know, the longer that you can conserve this speed, the faster your lap one time is going to be, the faster your entire track is going to be. So it's really, really important to maintain that speed. So here I, I'm able to do it very well. Again, another triangle jump to increase my speed even more. Um, <laughs> and again, look at, notice my temperature. I'm going to be in the air for quite a while, right? It's about a middle of M, right? Well, I should be releasing B in the air here. So you'll see how, you know, doing that also really helps with uh, preserving your temperature. See, my temperature, now my temperature is... You know, it went a little bit below M, you know, and then I had to hold, hold, hold a B right before I landed. At this point, you want to, you know, you want to be holding B every time you're bouncing as well. So, anyway, so I've gained even more speed. So here we go. So now I'm going really fast. And I'm going to kind of just let it play out because this is kind of cool. Another, another one. Another one. <laughs> At this point, I'm like, okay, I can pretty much clear everything. <laughs> and you, you see that I went so fast that even holding forward, you can see me at the bottom of this. There I am at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> um, I don't know. Can you even see it, actually? I don't know if you can even see it. Can you see me? Oh, why doesn't it show it? I was... <sighs> Hold on. It doesn't even show it. I'm sorry. I don't know why that... Hold on. We're, we're gonna... I'm sorry about this. Oh no. <laughs> there I am at the bottom of the screen, right there. So that's a, uh, so that's Excite Bike, and that's basically it, if I'm being honest. Um, I, I've kind of already gone through what I wanted to. Um, the thing is, is that it's just, once you learn the technique, you can apply it to any of the stages. Um, oh, there was one other thing. Um, there was one other thing. If you, you know how I said, if you go off... So if you want to lengthen your distance, if you want to lengthen your distance, you, you, right as you go off the jump, you move down a lane to lengthen your distance. But if you want to shorten your distance, and sometimes you do, um, if you want to land in a specific spot but you don't want to lose any speed, um, what you do is actually the opposite. You can go off the jump and switch lanes upwards, and that actually gives you less distance than uh, if you just went off the jump straight or, you know, it's it's basically like three lengths. You got, you know, you stay in, you, you go down a lane, you get the most distance. You stay in the middle lane, you get, you know, the standard distance. You move up a lane as you go and you get a shorter distance. So it'll be like, you know, you land here, you land here, and you land here. You know, so being able to adjust that speed, um, I mean that distance, really helps with 
you know, you don't, your speed varies quite a bit. So you, you know, sometimes it's like, I want to land, I want to make sure I land. Oh, the other thing with the bouncing, you always want to land on a flat surface. It could be on the top of a jump. There's a very narrow, sometimes there's a very narrow space that's a flat surface. Um, Cause if you don't land, if you don't bounce on a flat surface, you will crash. Um, but anyhow, um, I guess that's about it. It's, um, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of little things I could go into. For example, uh, there is one other thing. If you, if you release the D pad as you're jumping in the air, um, it can also reduce your distance. I, I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, Sometimes I do that to just, if I really, if I want to get a very precise, if I have to like slow down and I want to get a really precise um, placement of the bike, I stop holding forward and it's, you know what it does? What happens is it slows you down. If you release the D-pad in the air, it'll slow you down just kind of slightly you know, like the longer that you release the D-pad, the longer, the slower and slower you become. Um, so it's very good for getting a precise distance. Um, so I'm going to just, I'm going to actually just kind of do one more, do one more little demonstration. Yeah, so I'm just going to see, when I, when I hold, yeah, when I release... Yeah, it's, it's pretty much only useful to release the D-pad if you're going really fast already. So like if I'm already doing, if I'm already doing these jumps, release the D-pad, it slows me down as I, as I travel through the air. But um, again, I'll, I'll just, you know, your basic play is essentially, I'll do, I'll do track five. I don't do track, let's do track Let's do track three. Your basic, oh, oh, there's also these. If you come across these bumps, all you want to do is you want to press back and do a wheelie over them. You just have to do a little, little thing to avoid crashing. Um, that's about it. And you, know, you want to land, obviously want to avoid, avoid the dirt. Um, see how like I angled the bike, you know that didn't really work out, but I angled the bike exactly how the hills are oriented, and that's like your basic go-to if you're you know if you're not doing the fast speed you want to land, you know I land up. The exact angle of the ramps, you know, or you know, you might you want to land flat if you can't do the fast speed. Um, beyond that, there's not too much else I wanted to say. I just I think what I wanted to show you, the only other thing I wanted to show you really was, just in theory, how fast you can actually go, and um, you know. As fast as my times can get, um, there is a lot of potential for even faster times. I was going to say before that you know your good time for track one, right? I showed you a I showed you a time that was about a minute and five seconds. If you don't overheat at all, you'll get a time of around fifty five seconds. Well, but with the advanced play, you can actually get a time of forty one seconds. You can, you can save a whole 13 to 14 seconds on a single track, um, or even possibly more than that by, by learning these, these uh, advanced strategies. So um, that's why I love this game, and that's really why I'm doing the tutorial, because it's, it's a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun with this speedrun. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of a different speedrun where... It's kind of an unusual speedrun where you 
aren't necessarily, you know how, like most speed runs, you know, it's like somebody gets 30 seconds and then the next guy gets, you know, that's the, let's say that's the world record and the next guy gets 29.98, you know, it's like, oh wow, they improved by 0 0.02 and the next guy gets 29.97, oh, they improved by 0 0.01, cool again, right? You know, and it gets to this point where it's like, you can only save 0 0.01 seconds. You can only save point, you know, you can only save a, uh, maybe two or three frames, right, at most. Well, Excitebike is different because you can get, you know, you can pretty much get, like, unlimited speed almost, in, in a sense. You know, you're not going to, you're never going to play perfectly. You're never going to get perfect speed necessarily. Um, I mean, in theory, I guess you could, but um, there's always potential to save a lot of time. So even my, you know, my world record for track one is 41 seconds, but the tool assisted speed run got 36. You know, and I've been I've been playing that forever, trying to reduce the time. Um, so what I'm trying to say is, there's a lot of potential, even for. Um, you know, this is what this is what I want to show you is the amount of speed that you can get from these things. You know, it's it just keeps going. You know, look, I'm wrapping to the bottom. Now I'm actually traveling <laughs> so high that I crash. Um, and you can do this stuff a little bit. You know, in like you can only do so much on the tracks, but you can get it to a a point where you know you actually could can loop to the, you know, to the, through the, from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen if you're playing fast enough, playing well enough on some of the tracks. Um, you know, but in theory you can improve all the world records by, by a ton of time. Um, to show you, to, one other, one more thing I want to just say about, you know, why I think this game's kind of fun to speedrun is, like I was saying, um, the times vary quite a bit as you play. Um, my, my world record for track one is 41 seconds, 41.61. Well, my previous time, the world record before that, was 43.69 seconds. So, when I got that world record, I improved the track one time by over two full seconds. And and it's not that my times my time wasn't optimized, it's just getting just that much more speed transfers into these gigantic time saves. So it's uh it's just very interesting. It's a very interesting speedrun game. And uh I love it because the times never get maxed out. I never get to a point where I'm like, oh, I don't think I can improve this time. It's always going to be improvable. I'm never going to max out the time. And when I do get a personal best, it might be by a few seconds, um, which is just something you don't see in a time trial game like this. Um, so that's why I, I suggest you know trying this game out, trying to learn the strategies. Um, it's hard to start at first, but it really pays off in the end. Um, I've really enjoyed this game, you know, it's taken me a long time to get the kinds of times that I've gotten, but even seeing, like, you know, seeing those improvements as you go is just kind of a cool feeling. You know, seeing your time go from a minute to, you know, 50, 50 seconds, and then you're like, let's see if I can get under 50. Can I get under 45? Can I get under 43? You know, and, uh, you know, I still think, you know, my, my track one time is the one I spent the most time on. I got a 41.61, but I still think I probably could get a sub 40 if I kept going at it. Um, and there are also some little techniques I've, you know, I still still come up with slight technique improvements and such. Um, so that's the tutorial for Excitebike. I hope I went into depth on everything as much as I should have. Um, I think this is a much better tutorial than the one I made prior to this, so hopefully it's, hopefully it's useful to you.